hey what's up everybody welcome back to the channel today for another review today my friend jenna and i who is one half of the nurse awakened podcast joins me as we are going to break down the new series the frog coming to netflix august 23rd there is eight episodes they are lengthy you're getting every bit of your money's worth they're all about an hour to a little bit over an hour in terms of runtime and i'm going to tell you this is in a korean i would say drama but it's a little bit of a drama a thriller suspense i mean it's tapping a whole bunch of different genres but i'm telling you right now if that's what you like in terms of your programming you're in for a treat with this one so with that being said i gave you a little bit of the script is what is this actually about here <laughs> So the official Netflix description um, says it's a suspense thriller revolving around um, the story with, of people with, you know, peaceful lives in this rural setting, and it all gets upended by this mysterious young woman who comes in and throws a wrench in their lives. Um, that is really not describing much at all what the show is about. Uh, if yeah, if you like like Christopher Nolan stuff where it's just you know different timelines and jumping and non-linear storytelling with a lot of like blood and violence and <laughs> horror and suspense thrown in I'm sure you'll like it I'm sure yeah. it'll be worth the eight plus hours yeah a thousand percent um first thing I want to jump off with saying is um you know this was something we sorted out pretty early so we're very excited to be able to get this early and talk about it but i'm pulling the curtains back just a little bit because one thing we both scratched our head about and it's not a critique to the project at all was netflix embargo this in a half where four episodes had one embargo date and the remaining four had another um embargo date but all the episodes are dropping at the same time so we sat back and was like wait what that's a and, and that as long as we've been covering stuff this may be the first time I've ever seen an embargo for an entire binge drop separated in halves. So my first question to you, now that we now have seen it all, do you think you understand the logic behind that decision? I mean, I guess so. Maybe they wanted to, you know, let people be able to drum up excitement about it without being even able to spoil anything because <laughs> i feel like you know by the end of episode four i totally thought the show was going one direction and it absolutely went the other way yeah so but when it came to having to review for you know the actual premiere date we slammed eight episodes in like thousand a few, percent a few days yeah um so before we get into our, our our deep dive of our discussions we'll keep the first half spoiler free and then we can get into some of the particulars on the second half so i will kind of caution some spoilers there but yeah i totally agree i feel like the first episode the first four episodes definitely sort of set the table in terms of expectation and tone um and, and again when it comes down to uh korean uh either cinema uh, and, and and television i think a lot of us at this rate now kind of have an expectation in terms of what you can get i mean they don't hold back especially when it comes down to the brutality of things I and mean, i cannot wait to talk about our antagonist in this because what a performance it may be one of my favorite performances this year but even after that because of course this entire time I'm like okay what, what's going to happen after this transition from the fourth to the fifth episode i will say that the remaining four definitely was like okay so everything that you thought hold that for a second we're about to give you a whole new slate of ideas drama um just a lot more and it definitely shifted the entire series to the second gear so i think you're entirely right where they was like we're going to give you a little taste and we want the, you know the critics the reviewers etc to get out there and hype this up rightfully so the first four episodes are fantastic but when you come back for these other four just know that you're in for an entirely different treat and i loved it i loved how they through the entirety of the story art they were able to nail it even with the two halves really having to me i would say like more of a moderate tone in the beginning definitely a lot of things happening but the second half was like pedal to the metal 
you just moment for moment things were getting out of hand um and we're talking about there's a lot of physicality in it as i mentioned just blood just gore things are exploding um you know you just don't know who's on what side motives kind of stay the same but at the end of the day we're really at the mercy of our um antagonist and i truly truly apologize for any mispronunciations of names and, and jenna definitely helped me out here but we have to talk about sayonga i believe is how you say her name nonetheless uh, she's paid by uh uh key men c uh who you may know from sweet home her performance here as our antagonist she is the un un <laughs> what was is a good word to to describe her showing I, up at people's houses i mean you can just tell from the first moment that she is unhinged <laughs> but like her performance runs the whole spectrum of unhinged like it's like the quiet menacing unhinged at the beginning all the way to just like you know screaming violent <laughs> totally out of her mind unhinged so goman c's performance was just she was so good and very very different from her role in sweet home which is where i know her from where probably a lot of people know her from uh but just incredible like yeah. from her first scene you're like oh no <laughs> yeah i think i saw obviously she's all over the promotional material the trailer absolutely sold me and yeah you you nailed it the spectrum of unhinged every single time you think she's met her limit or even met her match once again was like hold my beer <laughs> you're in for a right? lot more <laughs> like you never you never know like what is this woman actually capable of like are they just making her seem a lot scarier than she is but like no she just keeps upping the ante yeah for horrible things so and it's an incredible um journey to go on with that yeah. character and and i would even say like maybe her power of manipulation like even in situations where her back was clearly against the wall i mean guns pointed at her head and she somehow had the measure of resilience to get out of that to then quickly flip the table back on somebody i mean mm -hmm. I don't want to give anything away, but like this ain't somebody you want to be in the car with going down the road, having, you know, talking about conversations, listening to music of sorts. Like she was clearly a red flag since mm -hmm. the beginning. And she still was able to lure people in in close proximity numerous times. And she was really good at reading people and their weaknesses. Facts. And, you know, like you said, when her back is against the wall, she can turn it around and be like, but I know what you want. And I can give it to you, but you know, you have to do A, B, C. So <laughs> it just, I mean, she was scary. Like she was legitimately scary because she couldn't be reasoned with and seemed to always, always get out Yeah. from whatever, you know, you think they've almost got her. Yeah. <laughs> but no. So as I like to say, our Airbnb owner, Young Ha, um, just, typically doing his diligence i mean we have to talk about his performance in a minute paid by uh kim young i forget how you pronounce the second part of this uh kim kim yun so okay yes um this is very much a normal guy um he has some likely decisions he wants to make um at times it appears he may even want to get out of the business he has a interesting relationship with his daughter um but he's a very just normal guy but this story we see well, just how much can you push a normal guy to the edge <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i think it's fair to say he also shows a sign of being an inch too and, and in just a very different capacity because he gets fed up at a time but he's there's a lot of remorse within um, he, he definitely goes through the spectrum of emotions as well, too, considering everything that he's involved with. But the way how they wrote these two characters, and these are just only two characters. There's so many more we could talk about. But the way how they wrote these two characters, and typically, especially when it comes down to comments and such, it's a good guy and a bad guy. And I know I'm talking about protagonists and antagonists here. But it's just not linear at all. I mean, she's damn sure just the bad guy all the mm -hmm. time. But again, do her way of manipulation and know how to use people. 
you may feel a sense a, a, a sense of empathy for her like which is I started to question myself. <laughs> Which, I mean, I feel like for any good, you know, horror suspense, when there's a psychopath, they've done their job right. When you do, like, oh, like, okay. Like, I, sh I mean, clearly she's psycho, yeah. but they give her enough humanity yeah. to where, you know, it's hard to hard to watch some of the things yeah. that fall her. But... Uh, what's your thoughts about Yanka? I um I had him totally wrong from the beginning just in who I thought he was and I'm I'm I don't watch a ton of like suspense thrillers so maybe I'm just not good about catching all the beats mm -hmm. but I I always thought I'm like okay he seems like a good guy but maybe he's like maybe he's secretly a little crazy and the more we start to see like he kind of experiences some paranormal like paranoia um there's stuff that is really hard to explain. We're like, wait, did that happen? Like, did yeah. he dream that? Did he hallucinate yeah. that? So, but I mean, his performance was was great. Every little layer you peeled off of him um, was really interesting. Again, he was not who I thought he was going to be. And yeah. we can talk about that in the spoiler, <laughs> spoiler mm -hmm. part of the show. Mm -hmm. But... They were great foils for each other. You know, he's yeah. kind of this quiet, keep to himself guy who usually doesn't have problem with his Airbnb guests. And then <laughs> Psycho Susie comes in and you kind of see, you see that different side of him. He's like, oh, maybe he's not totally a good guy. After all, he's making some bad decisions. Yeah. Um. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more on the non-spoiler side. So I'm gonna talk about the production here and just overall my thoughts about the series. So uh, one thing I was very, very high on this series was the unexpected, how much I unexpectedly loved the music. They made some very interesting choices. And as this is a career drama, thriller, horror, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they, who, who knows, knows exactly what it is <laughs> they picked some very american uh songs for their soundtrack in it and i thought it really spoke volumes into sort of the research but also i think on the flip side of things because i think in american horror we always tend to make songs and i think jordan pill is a prime example of taking songs that we had not once seen to be um within the scope of a horror film and make it in a way that you start to feel the sense of dread or the atmosphere core around it and i think they did the opposite they took songs that we were very keen to in a situation that was clearly dreadful all around and again as fair horse i thought it was i thought it was borderline genius in how they use some of the music uh, that they used in this and i just wasn't expecting that at all um uh, set location was amazing mm -hmm. um all the production about like the production value looked so good just i mean like the cinematography that the shots they would get even like the cuts between scenes sometimes they'd be really clever where they would kind of like match sounds yeah. and transition it into a completely different scene but kind of keep that cohesiveness yeah there's a particular shot when um uh sayong sayong ah uh, sayong how do i get it wrong uh in the grocery store and the way how they have this angle of her as she's scrolling through the grocery store with the cart and they have the angle pointing up at her and it looks like she's in a madhouse of a frenzy mm -hmm. of what she's trying to do. And I tell you how they took a very, at times, peaceful environment and they just turned it up to the max with her with how they just shot it. So yeah, cinematography like, to the to Literally just the a camera angle. Like, mm -hmm. Like in the beginning, like there's this shot of like this puppy toy, yeah. just a puppy toy, cute puppy toy. And they somehow made it <laughs> so like foreboding <laughs> mm -hmm. just with like that, you know, that background music. And I mean, yeah, the, the look of, of the frog was so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was beautifully shot. So yes, production up and down the board, uh, score soundtrack they nailed it story absolutely kept you engaged the entire time um i both watched it both in um in uh it, its native language in korean and i've also watched the dub as well 
uh, which whatever your cup of tea may be, I don't think it loses any slack to that. Um, um, you know, sometimes, you know, the, um, the, um, the dubbing can be a little, little bit offsetting. I, I did not find myself distracted by that as, as it sometimes typically can. Um, so whatever your preference is, you should be good on that note. Um, but overall, I mean, yeah, what, what, a, what a story that kept you guessing, but yet engage amazing performances here by our leads and even some of the supporting characters really adds a lot the physicality so i will mention the stunts in this as well too um our our female lead out here might have outworked everybody in the stunts um mm -hmm. kudos absolutely kudos there and i thought also too and whether the stunts had a stunt person or whatever everything done practically was fantastic and i also think the practicalness of the story only made that even better. Um, there was nothing that was just way over the top. And although there seemed to be some potential supernatural stuff, or maybe it was glimpses of PTSD, I don't know. Um, nonetheless, I think they kept things very grounded and let the characters be the driving factor to where your mind was sort of stimulated to. So I enjoyed it on that note. This is definitely something I say is a must watch. What about you? Oh, for sure. Like I said, like we said, the first four episodes, it does a great job of setting the tone, just building that feeling of suspense and dread, which, you know, if you're watching a thriller, you probably, you probably want that. And then just keep like turning things on their head, keeping you guessing. And like you said, keeping you engaged. Like I spent the entire time watching being like, okay, like what can this be? And they, yeah. they do make it hard because um, it is very non-linear storytelling, so you don't know, are we in the present? Are we in the past? Like, And they'll have future conversations taking place over like a current scene. So they keep you on your toes. Yeah. And like keep you guessing and fe like we would stop watching an episode and I'd be like making dinner and being like, okay, what is this like? What does this mean? And who can this <laughs> So it's like, it's a show that stays with you because you know they're telling a a complicated but very gripping story it does for me it got a little almost too messy in the middle just mm -hmm. trying to keep track and like mm -hmm. feel like you're staying on top of the story and mm -hmm. maybe they didn't want you to stay on top of the story yeah, yeah the it never <laughs> it never it it absolutely never settled it never settled four episodes in and i kept i had a few questions which I'll go right into when we get into spoilers, but it never settled. It landed, it 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 found its landing by the seventh and eighth episodes. That's when I was like, okay, I think they're finding a way to crescendo this now at this point. Because at this point, it's a, it's, it's like anybody who rides roller coasters. I'm sure if you if you ride the still ones, you know, a little bit more smooth, you know exactly where your your ups and your downs are gonna be and all that sorts of stuff. But those wooden roller coasters, you may go up and you may go down, but you're bouncing this way. It sometimes ain't the smoothest ride. Oh, yeah. Will we survive? We'll yeah. Who knows? So, um, yeah, if I, yeah, that, that'll be my analogy for this. This was a wooden roller coaster of a ride. Here. Absolutely. Let's get into spoilers here. So, again, folks, you will have an opportunity to check this out on Netflix August 23rd, all eight episodes, an hour plus a little bit more each for each of them this is the fraud i'm starting off with you where do you want to go when you want to talk about specifically to some details with some of this okay i do want to say i spent for the first five or six episodes so there are two two story arcs happening at the same time mm -hmm. um one about the vacation rental mm -hmm owner and the the crazy guest and then there's also one about a couple running a motel it took me about till the second episode to realize that that storyline is taking place in the past 20 some years in the past yeah <laughs> um it, at the motel a a serial killer has killed someone in the hotel and that ruins their lives the owner's lives mm -hmm. um I, my theory was that the vacation rental owner and the hotel were the same character. The ho hotel owner were the same character. Yeah. So we're seeing like his past and his present at the same time. For me, that made a ton of sense. It did. So when you said that, I, my jaw dropped. I was like, holy shit. Am I watching the same thing? But once I sat and <laughs> thought about it, I was like, oh my God, this really does check out 
Only yeah, till maybe. it didn't. <laughs> only, only till you have the two different characters in the same room. I'm like, oh, I was wrong. Um, I mean, but it was also, even though I was wrong, it was also really fun to be running with that theory. Like it yeah. added a whole new element of how am I going to prove myself right from all these scenes and clues. I felt really smart for about six episodes, uh, but it, it was still fine when yeah. when I was wrong. Um, but I, I the, the theory made sense to me because we see um, Yonga, the vacation remote owner, and he is really sure that um, there has been a murder in his rental um, and he just decides to kind of cover it up and forget it never happened which kind of goes along with the quote that they were saying at the beginning of every movie like if a tree falls in the forest but no one's around to hear so he's like well if I didn't see it happen and I can't actually prove it happened yeah, can I just pretend it didn't happen <laughs> For me, that made sense. Like if he was the motel owner from 25 years ago, his life had already been ruined by one murder taking place under his roof. So he was going to absolutely stick his head in the sand and ignore it because yeah. he, he couldn't go through that again. Yeah. But so, but once I was proved wrong, it really put Yonga in a, like a more morally gray light. I'm like, buddy, why would you not call the police? <laughs> like this all started because you just didn't want to, you didn't want to deal with the ramifications. Yeah. So, In I mean, it added a lot of intrigue to his character. I'm yeah. Like, what, dude? And conflict. Yeah. yeah, because he he decides to, a part of him brought him into that police station where he felt like, ah, this feels like the right thing to do. And I think it's important for us to mention um, the cop who has been on the case the entire time, a cop playing essentially a private investigator because she happens to be at the right place at the right time all the time here. But Bo all Mim <laughs> was a very intriguing character, a supporting character that I definitely had my eyes locked in because with everybody else being so conflicted, kind of wondered where she was going to stand with things. But um I do agree with Yonka's story and not to mention too, like when he's first introduced to um what's her name when she comes and then an hour so, an hour Songa. Songa, Songa. yeah. A, a, a hour. A year passes since his first visit with her. And she just shows up, no reservation. She just feels like she owns the damn place. Mm -hmm. But this th this time she's by herself because she initially came with this boy, this little kid. And and I thought I was tripping because I'm like, I'm pretty sure. And I think it might have been two episodes after us. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there was a young kid that left sort of a soft spot on him. And we're not talking about this kid. And I know I'm not going to give any of that away. But this understanding that like a kid disappearance, a, 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 a murder that we see a couple of people see, by the way, in different ways. We see some murders happen in the way or the the results of a murder mm -hmm. the cleanup effort sort of say of a murder and then we see this person who just comes back who we the, when we saw her she was definitely looking like prime suspect number one um but her coming back just was definitely like okay what, what are we doing here so there was so many things that were kind of set in terms of the suspicion that as the viewers you have no clue where to go and i also couldn't help but to be completely I couldn't help but to be completely um, observative of the fact that she, I think she had like some Toyota in the beginning. And then she comes back with a Mercedes G wagon. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What has happened in one year? Something has happened where she's landed upon with some money. She was talking about trying to, I, I won't say invest. She was trying to buy the damn place. So there was just a lot of randomness with this character that's also missing a kid now. <laughs> this was just like what is really happening and she flexed her sort of like her presence she didn't care who was around it was about her she was going to find her way in you could just tell something was off and it was just the beginning of the role of her being unhinged and the last thing i'm going to say about uh young ka is we sort of see the prey becoming the predator in his story mm -hmm. arc and this measure of him ultimately becoming a terminator at the end 
it was something I didn't know I needed, but it was so enjoyable. Some of the shots of him walking, walking in slow motion. I don't want to give too much of that away uh, of what and why he's walking and what he's doing and what he has. But like they definitely showed this guy slowly but surely become the predator. Um, yes. and, 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 and when you really look back, it's like, all right, this guy really had, he just had enough. Mm-hmm. All of these things are justified here. I'm with this guy 100% now. Yeah, I have in my notes. I'm like, oh, I'm like, the the hunter has become the hunted. <laughs> <laughs> like, seeing, seeing Yonga start to fight back, I'm like, murder is wrong, but I'm kind of cheering him on right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's, without spoiling, you know, everything, there is, it feels like a theme. They keep mentioning the frog. Um, I'm not sure if there's some Korean folktale that, you know, anyone in that culture would instantly recognize, mm-hmm. but I looked up and there's a Aesop fable about how boys just for fun are throwing rocks into a pond. Mm-hmm. They're having fun, but the frogs are terrified and getting hit and dying. And that might be the story they're referencing, but it's about all these people sucked into kind of the the wake of these this psychopath's fun mm. <laughs> and the frogs start to fight back i will say um by commentary and i think the commentary was by bo mim that sort of the narration behind the frog was her depiction of what young Ka's story is and she mentioned it and, and one i took notes the second one i i just kind of just listen i can't quote it verbatim but mm-hmm. the one i did write down was said it was about a story about someone hit being hit by so many things at once and so it, it essentially that equates to a frog and i guess it's like it's essentially to your point about like what's a frog day to day and at what point did it eventually uh, croak and just flip over when there's just enough of it mm-hmm. and this was a guy who whole story was just like when it rains it pours it was literally one thing after another it just did it, it just kept getting worse for him um but yeah I, I definitely was sort of curious was there some type of folklore or anything attached to it so i'll be interested to hear you all in the comments what do you think uh, and what did you make of the title because i think there is a couple of different like narratives around it uh, or maybe there is some deep research with it but I definitely feel like when it comes down to the frog, it's definitely tailored to young Kyle's story and just a guy that is just being hit left and right with something. I mean, he refused to stay down, but certainly he got it the worst. And then, Ed, if it's, it's if it's what you said, I can buy into that 100 percent because this was absolutely um, Sangha's uh, whole playground of, of, of terror. <laughs> like oh, yeah. no one was safe <laughs> nobody but and seeing like young be pushed to his limits and like you're like dude like how much more are you gonna take yeah and you know seeing seeing that pushback in the in the later half of the season mm-hmm. was again it's like yeah maybe some crimes are being committed but <laughs> It's 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 good to see him see him fight back. And, and and that's the last thing I really did want to say was that as the viewers, we're very much exposed to like everything that's happening. But as the characters, you tend to forget that the characters are are, are experiencing this in different vantage points or perspectives. So like without a doubt, no one's gonna sit here and watch this show and think that Sangha is a good person. Mm-hmm. And she did some things. We know it, she said it, and it was about trying to get her on the hook. And even when he, Young Ha, had moments to try to get her on the hook, she found out ways to slit her from under it and mm-hmm. get on to the next. Her manipulation, her, I mean, she put, she, she ran a car into this guy, a G Wagon at that, came back with a Porsche right after that, too. Uh-huh. Like She's stole, relentless. She stole his backpack out of the car that had a bunch of evidence against her. Like, she just kept winning and yes. you know, sliming her way out of these situations. So yeah. that uh, waiting for that comeuppance and that karma to get her back was a huge element, like a huge successful, satisfying element. Yeah. Of the show. And then it was this whole other story with, with this character, uh, Kiho, um, who had um, he had some revenge in his heart, didn't have such a good relationship with his father. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But even his, he's really mysterious. You don't know. I'm like, has Giho gone to the dark side? Like, has his trauma pushed him to the dark side? You just, you're never sure. Uh, fun fact, Giho is played by a very popular Korean rapper named Chan Yul. The fact his introduction, his, his very primary introduction, I believe, is episode five. And we see him training to assassinate somebody <laughs> i mean i don't think this measure of terrorism training that they show him doing was something i was expecting to see in the show and that's again the transition from the fourth to the fifth episode is that we've seen sort of like the show going in one direction and then that fifth direction you, you get in you you get a couple of other characters uh including giho who becomes the main uh, focal point and like what is he what is he trying to do what is going on with his relationship with his father that we see and they resolve that uh th i'm not saying they resolve it as a as a father-son relationship but they um we, we come to a resolution in terms of that story situation with his mother um the, the, the whole hospital hostage thing that was kind of going on there there was a lot of like random things going on with this character that were just like i, I had the question for like the first 30 minutes of it's like am i watching am i watching the right thing <laughs> because they literally did change things and shift uh, should i say shifted things to a whole nother um to a whole a whole nother story but it wasn't really a whole nother story because it goes back to what you said when we wasn't able to establish the timelines we wasn't able to establish some of these illusions that may have been which i would attest to being ptsd which also goes back to your story about this being two different timelines of the same character and then only to find out that they were two different time they were two different timelines but they were in fact two different characters because yeah. they were very protective about names early too even the mm -hmm. captions was very protective about not you not give me that early indication of the who was who the captions were a huge clue like when they started like naming people who were talking off screen i'm like oh okay mm -hmm. now we're getting into it yep yep so yeah for all folks for all. any other comments or, or thoughts i just talking about like giho's storyline i do like how they finally wove them together at the end i love it and connected yongha with giho and these you know these two murders and and i won't spoil it but i did really enjoy um yeah how those two stories combined in the present and then um there's a scene at the end where i'm like oh yeah there's there's not a lot of happiness in the show but episode eight definitely gives you something to feel better about um with with some of our characters giho having um a part of that as you mentioned mm -hmm. young kai and young kai's daughter and young kai's daughter alone and i'm not even gonna give that away that had me on the edge i was like holy hell right. i don't need any more shock in this like there was there was there were some decisions that was going to have to be made and i was just wondering and what the cause and effect was it was going to be but they definitely took the ladder of of everything that i thought they were going to do and where it was going to go but uh yeah it had you it had you clenching your seat because you, i just did not know where it was going to go but yeah episode oh, yeah. eight should give you a little bit of moment to kind of woo sigh and, mm -hmm. uh, and and something to send you off on a positive note of all the crazy things. But even then, I like I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm Same. like, everything <laughs> seems okay. I'm like, mm -hmm. are in the last five seconds? Are we gonna get this? <gasps> yeah, I I thought a phone call may have been coming from a particular person. I was like, there's <laughs> no way. So, like, no. But I think that's man, enough what to... a thrill ride. The Absolutely. Whole time absolutely yeah i hopefully that gives you all enough of a convincing factor to check this out um hopefully for the folks that's here to kind of th talk about the um the ending or some spoiler stuff hopefully we gave you a little enough a little uh enough of our perspective to kind of either enhance your thoughts your theories and absolutely at once this uh the series uh airs to get in the comments and we could talk very specifically about things but we want to give you a little bit of both want to give you our thoughts and perspectives about it now spoiler wise but also give you a little enough to know like we watched the damn thing and we have some thoughts and we definitely could talk <laughs> to some more things and probably talk much longer but i think we will leave it right there for you all that being said once again the frog it 
comes to Netflix August 23rd. All eight episodes, an hour plus each. This is one you don't want to miss. And on that note, for myself and for for Jana here, we appreciate you coming through, checking out with us. You can be watching the video right now or the audio recording of this one way or another. But either way, let us know in the comments or interact with us on social media with all of that being in the description below. And we we'll look forward to seeing you all's thoughts, your theories. And I hell, the one thing I'm really looking forward to is everybody's um, th- everybody initial thoughts before they were entirely curveball about what really happens. I want to know those, yes. uh, those very those those first three episode thoughts. What were y'all thinking that was happening? So for the folks who's watching this, check out 304 and come right here and let us know what you thought. <laughs> and come back for more we later. Want- we want all the theories right or wrong like yes. we want to know if you were on the same journey that we were yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you all watching and listening to us today thank you so much we'll see y'all back for more content very soon thank you I, 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 I,